support. All right, hey guys, welcome to our Thursday night call. I hope you're excited, I hope you're here, I hope you're ready to learn. I am going to put my phone off of vibrate. Um, grab a pen, grab a piece of paper. If you are calling in on a phone, that's okay, because, well, that's okay. Emily, am I good? Can you just see my screen, just the slideshow? Yep, all right. Well, like every call, um, we will start with recognition, but before we start, if you're in a bad mood, if you have a negative thought in your head, let's just get rid of that right now. Just shake it on out, get rid of it. It's gone. All right, we're good. We're good. Yeah. All right, you guys better be pumped. Let's go ahead and start. Oh, hold on. I have to get rid of this chat and this thing on my screen because that's all I'm going to see. All right, let's go back to play. Let's go ahead and start with our leaderboard. Sorry, I have not posted this in the team page yet. Um, it's been a very busy day. Congratulations to our two co top coaches this week. I kind of switched things up. I did a top coach for the most success club points because that means Stephanie Brickley has helped at least a minimum of six people. She is helping change lives, and that is how we are going about success club. It's not about the points. It is about the amount of people that we are helping. So congratulations to Kelsey Neeson and Stephanie Brickley. Amazing job this week. I can see we're getting our mojo back slowly but surely. There are a lot of people on the board with success club points. That means if you're on the board, that means you already helped one or two people. That means you're helping them reach their goals. And that just means you have to push a little bit harder to find those people and help change those lives. So keep on pushing. Uh, congratulations, Stephanie Brickley, Emily Albrico, Lindsay Sessions, and myself. We have gotten our Beach Bodyopoly. We're excited. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna pay Beach Bodyopoly all night long. Not really, but that is the prize this month if you get Success Club Five. You get Beach Bodyopoly. So, woo! Let's be excited about that. All right, guys. Um, before I start this call, I have no announcements. Maybe I'll think of some at the end. I'm just really pumped for this call. Um, I listened to a call the other day by Lindsay Stay. If you do not follow Lindsay Stay, go follow her. Lindsay Stay. S T A Y. She is an amazing coach. She's very down to earth. She's humble. She's real. She's going to tell you exactly how it is. And I love it about her. So I listened to a call that she did. And I'm not going to lie. I might have copied some of her slides. I told her. She said, no big deal. Um, but her call really pumped me up. And I think this is exactly what our team needs to hear. I don't know the title for the call. Call it Believe in Yourself, Pump You Up. I don't know. We're going to go over a lot, but it's going to be good. So I hope you guys are excited. I hope you guys are ready. Before we start this, I need you guys to know you're good enough. So, you know, you don't have to repeat after me. You can say it in your head, but you guys need to know it. You are worth it. You can do this. You are good at what you do. You are a fantastic coach. You are changing lives. People want to join you. You need to know this. You need to believe this. And you need to know that you are a coach for a reason. Every single one of you is on our team for a reason. You found your coach. Your coach found their coach. Their coach found their coach, and I found my coach, and this is why we are on this team. You are here for a reason. So you need to believe all these. So repeat it. Say it over and over again, and if you're not saying this right now, I need you to look at the screen and put this through your head and be like, yes, I am worth it. I can do this. I am good at what I do. I am changing lives. I am a fantastic coach and people want to join me. You are good enough. Say it one time. I need to see people moving their lips. I got three people on the side. You are good enough. Thank you. Thank you. You can go back to eating, Emily. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Emily and Crystal are the two faces that I see. So you guys are going to be the ones I'm going to be looking at. Um, so let's get started. Let's just remember, just a little disclaimer. These are my opinions. These are not facts. They are not proven. I am far, 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 far from being the most successful coach in the business. I am not the top coach. I'm nowhere near the top coach. These are purely my suggestions. You can use it. You can ignore it. You can use part of it. You can ignore the whole thing. You can do whatever you want to do with it. But these are just my suggestions. And what I want for you guys is to build a business you are proud of to build a future for you that you want, all while keeping your sanity. This is a fun business. We should not be stressed. We should not be wanting to pull our hairs out. We should not be having crying sessions. Hello, I've had like five of those this month. We shouldn't be doing that. This is a fun business. And if you take the fun out of it, then what's the point? Like, what are we doing here? Yeah, we're changing lives. We have to have fun with it. So 
None of this is science. None of this is proven facts. This is just what I'm going to suggest to you, what I have found from Lindsay Stay, what I think has helped build my business. So let's get going. All right. So the first thing you need to do, you need to decide what coaching looks like for you and you need to be okay with it. You need to own it. Let's just say you need to own that you are a coach. Why aren't you, if you're not talking about it, if you're not sharing it, what is the point? Own that you're a coach. Be proud that you're a coach. We're all going to have, our coaching looks different for everybody. I posted on the team page the other day about like the discount coach, the hobby coach, and the business builder coach. A lot of you are hobby coaches. That's okay. That's fine. Some of you are in the in-between. You're like a hobby and a business, but you're not all in business. You're just in that in-between. I'm full on business. That's okay. I'm cool with it. There are coaches on the team that want to be full on business coaches. Whatever you want to do with the business, that is fine. But what you decide you want to do this with this business, you have to own it and you have to run with it. Um, and once you decide what your business looks like for you, like I said, be okay with it. You're going to have to be okay with the way that you grow. We all have different priorities. I don't have a family. I just have stilts. I have my husband, so I have a mini family. But he knows that sometimes I'm going to have to sacrifice time for me and away with him because I am building towards a future for us that we don't have to sacrifice time being away from each other. Some of you may be business first. That's kind of how I am. I'm making sacrifices now so later on down the road, I can be with my husband whenever I want. Some of you may want to put family first. That is okay. I am never saying that family should not become first. So you're going to work less hours, but you have to know that it may take you longer to reach your goals. Again, that is okay. You just have to accept what your business is going to look like and you have to own that. We all have different goals. Some of us want to be top 10. Some of us want to be a top coach. Some of us want financial freedom. We want to be elite. We want to be a full-time coach. We want to be the stay-at-home mom or dad so we can be home with our kids. We don't want to work in the cubicle anymore. But do not compare yourself to other coaches because we all have different goals. You need to write down your duties as a coach, as a leader. Um, sorry, I'm going to be looking at the screen and looking at my notes at the same time. Um, back to what I was saying, though. Also, you have to decide how bad you want it and what you're willing, willing to work for. This time last year, I decided I was all in. Well, in February, I decided I was all in. I worked hard. I was working on my 15 minute breaks. I was working on my lunch break. I would literally get home from working a 10 hour shift at my retail management position and get straight to beach body. Barely saw my husband, but I knew that it would be worth it in the end. So when you decide what kind of coaching you want to do, you just have to decide how hard you want to work for it. Um, write down your duties as a leader and let your coaches know what to expect from you and what you expect from them. Are you going to do team calls? Right now I'm the one that does team calls and that's okay. Are you going to expect your coaches to be on these team calls? You have to let them know that. Are you going to do one-on-one -on -one calls with your coaches? Are you going to do trainings? You have to let yourself off the hook and you have to let these coaches know what they should expect from you and what you expect from them. Do you have a coach that's going to have to message you every single day? I can't do that. I don't have time to answer messages every single day. So I may have to be like, all right, well, maybe we're not the best suit for one another because I may not be able to answer you every single day. But if you let these expectations be known ahead of time, you're kind of let off the hook because your potential coaches know exactly what they're getting when they sign up with you. Ask them what they expect from you and let them know what you expect from them. Um, up until recently, I thought I wasn't good enough. Like I thought I wasn't doing enough for the team. It's been a very hard month for me. Um, many coaches on the team can tell you guys, I've had like crying sessions. My poor success partner, Erica, I don't know if she's on the call because I only see three faces. Erica, if you're on the call, she knows how much I love her. I have cried to her like five times this month. I'm like, my team's not doing good. Like, what am I doing wrong? I'm failing as a coach. No. I'm doing everything I can do. And I had to accept that. I put the failures on me. Do you know what it's like to have a team of 200 plus people like weighing down on your shoulder and taking all these failures and thinking it's your fault? 
no one's success is contingent on me. No one's success is contingent on you. It's contingent on them, on what they do. Are they on the team calls? Are they doing the trainings? Are they showing up to the one-on-one -on -one calls? Are they doing their personal development? You have to know that. And if you think that their success is contingent on you, let's chat. Let's have a heart to heart because it's not. I can only lead by example. I can only give you guys all the tips, all the tools, and show you what to do to grow your business. The rest of that, that is on you. So if you're one of those coaches that's listening to this call and you're like, I have coaches quitting. Newsflash, I had three personally sponsored coaches quit this week. Three. Usually I'd be like, oh, what am I doing wrong? I'm like, you know what? It wasn't their time. This wasn't the right thing for them. That's okay. So if you're listening right now and you're like, man, I have coaches that are quitting. I have coaches that are active. What am I doing wrong? Take that burden off of your shoulders because that is not on you. This is everybody's individual business. This is on them and you have to accept that. Let's talk about phones. We all love them. We all hate them. You cannot be a slave to your phone. You need to set a time to check your messages. I can't tell you how many times I post on the team page that if you message me, I may take 24 to 36 hours. Everybody knows I don't follow that rule. If Emily messages me, I'm going to message her right back because I feel like I have to. Like, that's just how I am. I have to answer people. But I'm getting to realize that you can't be a slave to your phone. I talk about being living my freedom. I talk about not having to answer my messages all day. And I talk about this being my full-time job because I was able to leave my job. But here I am trapped to answering messages all day. You have to set boundaries. And once you set those boundaries, you have to be super effective during your work hours. So my work hours are when my husband is not home. So I work nine to five. And when he comes home, that's my time to be with him. I don't really work on the weekends anymore. Why? Because I left my full-time retail job, so I didn't have to work on the weekends anymore. So why would I work on the weekends if I left that job to not work on the weekends? Like, come on, it doesn't make any sense. Um, so if you decide that you're not gonna answer your messages, you're only gonna answer morning and night, that is okay. Those people that are messaging you saying, I wanna be a coach, or I wanna be in your challenge, guess what? They're still gonna be there when you answer your message tomorrow morning. You don't have to answer them right away. They're going to be there tomorrow. If they really want to do this, they will be there waiting for you. So if you see that little ding on your phone pop up, you don't have to answer right away. So if you learn anything, just repeat after me. You don't have to answer right away. All right. Just write that down. Write that down. Thanks, Crystal. Thanks for repeating after me. Appreciate it. One more tip. Write down your to-do list before you go to bed. Because you want to get all that stuff out of your head because you're going to wake up in the morning and be like, crap, what was I supposed to do? Like, I forgot. Write it down. That way that list is waiting for you tomorrow and you can sleep peacefully. We like our sleep. We need our sleep. All right. I think that's everything. Have a plan. Have a to-do list. Own it. Own your coach. Own what kind of coach you're going to be. And let's just roll with it. All right. Look at all these words. So many, so many words. We hear words like this all the time. Hustle, sleep when you're dead, stay up all night, sacrifice, 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 fight or flight. You're like, you're constantly in survival mode. Um, this is how I was last year. I'll tell you guys, if you were on the team with me last year, I, Layla, I know, was on the team last year. Brittany was with me last year. I was always on the go, go, go. I was always on my phone. I was always working beach buddy because I knew that I wanted this to be my job someday. But man, is it exhausting. Like if you're constantly working and you're constantly thinking about Beachbody, it weighs you down. Have you guys noticed in the past couple months, I've had to literally say, I'm out. I'm not answering messages tonight. I will not be on Facebook this weekend because I just get so emotionally drained. I see you guys chatting up there. I can't wait to read these chats. I hope you're saying that. I love this call. Just say it, just say it, just chat away. Um, you have to take a moment and you have to breathe. You have to find a way to shut it off. Put the phone down. If you are out to dinner with your family, put the phone down. If you need to do meditation, if you need to do yoga, Prayer, reading, whatever it is, 
Find a way to shut it down and to breathe. If you are a full-time coach, so it's me, and if Erica's on this call, do you know sometimes I don't even step outside all day unless it's to take my dog out? Why the heck am I working from home if I'm not outside? Granted, we live in New York and it's snowing on April 25th. That may be why we haven't stepped outside and enjoyed the sun. But if you work from home or if you're doing your beach body party hour and you're like, crap, I haven't seen the sun, go outside, go breathe. Take a minute and just take it in. You have to have downtime because if you don't have downtime, you're going to get stressed. You're going to get worn out and you're just going to be like, man, I know there's a coach on the call right now. She came to me last week and she's like, I'm over it. I'm over social media. That's all I did this week. I just need a moment. I told her, take a day off. Sometimes we literally just have to step away from Beachbody. That is okay. Just be present in the moment. Be present at game night. Be present with your family. Do not be a prisoner to Beachbody, to your phone. Yes, we love Beachbody, but we have to enjoy our freedom. Heck, that's what we're working towards. Enjoy your freedom. Write down your priorities. How many? I can only see three of you, so three of you are going to have to give me my answers. So Jessica, Crystal, Emily, you're the only three I can see. Everybody else, type it up in the chat box so I can see. How many of you grab your phone first thing in the morning and check your bajillion notifications and your messages? How many people? I better see those chat rolling. Yep, I 11. Yep, I see people. I bet we all do it. I do it. Why? You're not even awake yet. So you're just answering your phone. You're answering their messages. If you're like me, you're probably putting out fires for some of the coaches. Um, you're like, dang it. Every day, I kid you not, I probably wake up to at least 10 plus messages and at least, I kid you not, 40 notifications. Do you know how stressful it is to go through 10 messages and 40 notifications at Okay, I work from home, I sleep until nine, don't shoot the messenger. At 9 a.m., I'm not even awake yet. So here I am putting out fires, answering messages, answering notifications. I'm not even in a peaceful, happy mood anymore because I just put out 10 fires. No, get up. Do the one thing that's gonna feed your soul. If you like yoga, get up and do yoga. If you are religious, get up and pray. Check your, you have to set your priorities. You have to write them down. You have to do the things that are going to feed your soul and nourish you. You have to do this first. So this is kind of a list of things that I do. Work out, my power hour, my personal development, visualize. That means like, what are my, what are my goals? What am I working towards? Check my messages, Voxer, it's my new favorite thing, and trainings. These are my lists. My messages should not be the first thing I'm checking in the morning. My notifications should not be the first thing that I'm checking in the morning. So if you are literally the person that's checking your messages and checking your notifications, let's get out of that habit. Let's do the first thing that should put you in a nice, peaceful, grateful mood in the morning. So if that's working out, get up and work out. I can't tell you how many hours I waste in bed in the morning. I'm like, crap, I have been up for an hour and I'm still laying in bed and I'm still checking my messages. I could have worked out by now. Get rid of that. Your list may be different. That's completely okay. Um, Sorry, I have to like look at my notes to make sure that I'm like telling you guys all the things I have right now. Have a center focus. Just do the first thing that, like in the morning, do what nourishes your heart and your mind. Do that first. Be proactive towards the stuff that you're working towards. Create a schedule, designate hours, and honor them. All right, so I do know that I'm the only full-time coach on the call, unless I said, like, Eric is out there somewhere in La La Land because I can only see three people on my screen. So some of you are either parents or your full-time job, or your parents and you have a full-time job, which is like having two full-time jobs. I have a dog. I know what it's like. Just kidding. I know it's not a full-time job. But I know what it's like. I used to be a nanny, so I know, I know what it's like to have to take care of kids. So you may have to make some sacrifices. So it's been a while you know, seven months since I've been in the working world. I think you get breaks after like five hours, a 15 minute break. I don't know, depending on where you work, you get a lunch break. So you may have to put beach body in at those times. So at your 15 minute break, you may have to check a couple messages on your lunch. I know it's bad. You shouldn't eat and like do other things. You should enjoy your food, but that may be the time that you have to check in with your challengers or that you have to answer messages or you have to check in with your team. You may have to squeeze things in at different times. If you're a parent and you're a stay home mom, do you have to do Beachbody while the kids are in school, while they're napping, while they're occupied, while they're like 
coloring, you may have to squeeze things in here and there. And it may be a sacrifice in the beginning, but just know that you're doing this to work towards your ideal schedule. I busted my but last year, I was always, always working. I was a prisoner to my phone more than I am now, but it was worth it because in September, I left my job and I work from home now. Like it was worth it. Guess what? You may lose some sleep. I know you may lose some sleep. You may go to bed later. You may wake up earlier. You may have to wake up earlier to get in that workout. If you're not getting in your workout, wake up earlier, go to bed later. It may happen, but I promise you, it is worth it. Even if you're not, if you're sitting on the call and you're like, Ashley, I don't want to do this full time. Why are you talking about this? It's still worth it if you want to be a hobby coach, because even as a hobby coach, you can still get amazing benefits from Beachbody. When you're inspired about something, write it down. I don't know about you guys. I jump in the shower and I'm like, darn it. Like, that's a great idea. Well, great. I'm in the shower. What am I supposed to do with this great idea? Well, I'm in the shower. As soon as I hop out, Jot it down, put it in my phone. If you are sitting on a team call and you're like, man, this is an awesome idea like Emily's doing right now, jot it in your phone. Just kidding, Emily. Um, write it down. If you are about to go to bed and something comes to your mind or if you're in the middle of a workout, pause the workout, write it down, and save those notes for later. That way you have them later on. And what actions are you putting off right now that's gonna change your business? Are you putting off your workout? Are you putting off your power hour? Eat the frog, get it done. If you're putting off your workout or your power hour, your business probably isn't growing. Hello, those are like the two main things we have to do for our business to grow. So if you're putting something off that you know will get you results in this business, put it on your schedule, honor that schedule, and make sure you're working during that schedule on Beachbody. Do not use that time to scroll through Facebook and read News feeds, we all know the only thing people post nowadays is sharing pictures of puppy dogs and cats and other stuff. Do what is necessary to grow your business. Affirmations. We see these all the time, but how often do we tell that to ourselves? You get in, you get what you you get in what you put out. You joined Beachbody for a reason, and you found Beachbody for a reason. Um, you, like I said, you get it, you get out what you put in. It may not be immediate. It may take time to learn and grow. I've been there. My business was stagnant for a year. Hello, I almost quit a year ago. Can you imagine if I quit? None of you guys would be here. You may be with Joe Schmo on some other team. You may not see it right away but you will. Eventually you will reap what you sow. Only that would kill. The only thing that will kill it is doubt or giving up. I just posted in the team page. The only way to fail in this business is to quit. That's it. Never quit believing you can do this. You joined for a reason. This business does not discriminate. It does not decide who's going to be successful. It does not decide who's going to be a top coach. There's no discrimination in this business. It is completely open. You can do as much as you want with this business. Um, remind yourself of these things every day. Affirm that people want you to be their coach. There is plenty of room at the top, and you are exactly where you are meant to be. I don't know about you guys. I am a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. I have been dealt some really, sorry for cursing, shitty cards in my life, but you know what? I owned it and it made me the person that I am today. If you put in the work, if you believe that you can, you will be successful. I have never seen a coach in the two and a half years I've been with Beachbody put in 100% and not be successful. Believe in yourself that you can do it. Remind yourself of these affirmations every single day. Are you guys getting pumped? I see the chats just kind of quit. Hopefully you're still pumped. I always still see three people. Three people. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you. All right, guys. You're capable of amazing things. You're going to help many people, and you need to believe it. So is there an area that you doubt yourself? Me? I'm not the most organized person. Yeah, I'm getting there. Write down the opposite of that thing that you doubt about yourself. Write it down on a piece of paper and put it where you're going to see it every day. So 
If you're not an organized person, put down a piece of paper and put on your desk, I am an organized person. If whatever you think is the opposite, whatever that negative thing is in your head, write it down and put on a piece of paper where you can see it every day. And I hope you're remembering this because this will pop up at the end of the team call and I will expect pictures. FYI, count that as a moment to remember. Be positive, believe in yourself. Um, I believe in every single one of you. If you don't know that, I'm sorry, but I do, and I hope you guys do know that. Counteract that negative, that limiting, that self-doubting belief that you have in yourself. We all have it. I just had the belief last week. I kid you not, again, if Erica is on this call, Erica, I'm just, no, I can't even use my mouse. I'm sure she's on the call. She told me she was going to be here. I told her last week, I said, I don't think I'm capable of this. I don't think I'm meant for to be a beach body coach. And she quickly slapped that belief out of me, but it's easy to doubt ourselves sometimes, but we have to believe that we can do this. You are capable of amazing things. You are here for a reason. You are destined for greatness and to help a lot of people. Believe it, recite it, tell it to yourself daily. Write it on a freaking post-it note and put it on your desk where you see it every day. Again, I'm gonna say it one more time. You are capable of amazing things. You are here for a reason, you are destined for greatness, and you are going to help a lot of people. Remember that and believe that. Excuses. We all got them. Excuses are a well-planned lie, so we don't have to do other things. Yes, there are valid excuses. An excuse doesn't mean that it's not real or it's not hard. It just means, are you going to let that excuse stop you? We all have them. We're going to go through them. Life gets hard. Things come up. Death, illness, babies, relationship, injuries, life. I lost my mom seven days before Christmas. I did not let that stop me. Yeah, that probably should have put a huge damper on my life and literally just stopped me in my tracks. And I probably should have stopped everything that I was doing. But I use that as a platform. I use it as a way to talk to other people and inspire other people. I use that a way to remind people, talk to your loved ones, love them, cherish them, hug them, kiss them. You have to roll with the punches. You either have to decide, are you going to get through it or are you going to die on the hill? When something happens, use that as your platform. Use it as a way to reach out to other people. You're going to go through trials for a reason. I, like I've said, I have been dealt some shitty cards in my life. You guys know my past. I've tried killing myself twice. I was an avid cutter for 12 years, suffering with depression. I have hit somebody with my car. Like I have been dealt with the shittiest of the shittiest cards. But instead of that, letting that tear me down, I use that to help people. I use that to inspire and to let them know that if I could get through it, if I could make it through two times of trying to kill myself, then they can get through and wake up tomorrow and believe that anything is possible. So if life hands you something, roll with it. Don't let that stop you. Use that as a platform and use it to help and inspire other people. I always say, Beachbody is more than just fitness. We have to reach other people in other ways. Don't be afraid to share your life with people because you never know who it's going to help. You never know who it's going to inspire. You never know who you're going to touch. You're where you need to be. Be who you're going to be. There are so many times when you're building your business and you're on a cake and it's like, bam, life just gets in the way. It's like, nope, not today. See you tomorrow. It's up to you to stand up and be like, no, sorry, life. I'm going to use this. I'm not going to let you tear me down. I'm not going to use it as an excuse. I'm going to get up and I'm just going to keep on rolling. Roll with the punches. I hate excuses. I hate them. I hate them. I give them all the time. Hello, I got like one workout in this week. My excuse because I'm doing a kitchen renovation. That is not a valid excuse. Just decide. Are you going to go through it and get through it? Or are you going to die on the hill? Use that excuse as a platform to help other people, to inspire other people. Comparison. Just stop. Quit comparing yourself to people right now. Do you know how many times I hear, why did that coach just rank advance? I've been a coach for a year and a half, and she is already ranked advanced past me. Do you know how many times I get messages like that? Stop it. 
Just stop right here. It was their time to grow. It was their season to rank advance. It may not be your time. You still may need to learn as a coach and you still may need to grow as a coach. The quickest way to fail in this business is to compare yourself to other coaches. I am very guilty of it. When I hit diamond, I was like, what does it matter? What, what does it matter if I'm diamond? I'm friends with people who are star diamonds, like big deal. Do you know that only 2% of the coaches in this business hit diamond? And then I hit one star and I was like, eh. Again, ask Erica. I was like, it's no big deal. Are you kidding me? It's a big deal. Like, you can't compare yourself to other coaches. You're going to grow at the speed that you have to grow. Do you know that there are top coaches on this team? That, not on this team, I'm sorry. In the business that sat at Emerald for two years and they're now in the top 10? Prosper where you are planted. Get over the loss of what you never had or what you could have been. I think our team is still pretty early to know about like to get huffy and puffy about placement. But if you're one of those coaches, get over that you're in a crappy position on the on the little tree of beach body. I've had to grow both of my legs. I'm supposedly on a strong leg, but I've had to both grow, grow both of my legs. Quit. You have to quit comparing yourself to other people. Do you know that I've blocked a lot of coaches out of my newsfeed? Because I was that coach. I was like, man, that coach just hit. There's a coach in my area. She signed up in July and she's now a seven star diamond coach. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I have been a coach for two and a half years. Like, how are you doing this? It's her time. It's her time to be a seven star diamond coach. My time will come when my, when it's ready, when I'm ready to go, trust the process, do what you need to do and expect the best. I love this quote. Happiness is found when you stop comparing yourself to other people. So quit comparing yourself to other coaches. If you compare yourself to other coaches on this team, just stop it. It's a negative, negative energy and a negative force around you. And it sucks the life out of you. You are not them. You don't know their people. You don't know who then there's in their market. You're not them. You will rank when you need to rank. You will hit success club when you need to hit success club. You will qualify for that trip when you qualify for that trip. Just believe that you can do it and you will do it in your own time when it's your time, when it is your season. Ask for what you want. Ask for it publicly. Do you know how many times I've had coaches come to me and say, my cousin just signed up with another coach. I never asked her to be a coach. I should have. You have to ask people for what you want. People don't, if you haven't announced you're a coach, people don't know you're a coach. How are they going to know you're a coach if you haven't announced? Hello, of course Joe Schmo is going to go sign up with Sally Sue because Sally Sue announced she was a coach and you haven't. You have to announce you're a coach. You have to publicly say what you want. Do you want coaches that are motivated by goals? Do you want a self-starter? Do you want someone that is eager to change and to grow? Do you want someone who is inspired by a challenge? Do you want someone who's just kind of willing to roll with the punches? Do you want somebody that's teachable? You have to ask for what you want because if you don't, other people will. I'm not religious by any means, but if you're a religious person, ask the big man upstairs what you want. Do you want patience? Do you want your business to be blessed? Do you want to help other people? Ask him for what you want. When you don't ask for it, you're not going to get it. This is a part of posting daily and being consistent and sharing with people about this amazing business. I wish I could get everybody to join me. I wish everybody would see how life-changing this is, but they don't, so I'm just gonna keep sharing it, and hopefully eventually everybody will join me. You have to ask for what you want. Ask for it, post about it, ask for it. All right, guys, call to action. Should be at the end of all of our calls. I'm gonna get better about this, so get your pen and paper out or your phone and type it on your phone. What can you get over? Comparison, placement, that your spouse is on board. If your spouse or partner is on board, show them. Do you know when I first signed up, my husband was not on board. He's like, eh, I don't know about this. It's like, let me just see how it works. Do you know he supports me 100%, 100%? He's always like, all right, when are you gonna retire me? He supports me. I had to show him that Beachbody was worth it. What can you change? Can you change your attitude? Can you change the way you think? Can you change your perception on other coaches on the team? What can you implement into your coaching business? What do you love about this business? You have to focus on that. 
my focus on what I loved about this has changed as our teams has grown. I used to love the challenge groups. We all know I hate them now. I love helping you guys. I love helping you guys reach your goals. So that is my focus on this business. I love showing people that they can change their lives. So that is what I focus on. Remember that slide where I said to write out the opposite of that negative thing that's in your head? I want you to write out the opposite of your limiting thoughts. And I want you to post a picture of it. I am going to, after we get off this call, to post a thread. And everybody that is on this call, I want to see a picture of your post-it note. That is your homework. Everybody hear me? Yeah? Homework? All right. So that is our call. I'm going to stop the screen share. I am going to open it up. Five bajillion chats. Um, does anybody have any questions, comments, concerns, questions, thoughts? I would love to hear from any of you as my dog goes each shit in my lap. Take yourself off mute. I want to hear from you guys. I had one comment on something that you said earlier that was a really good point. I am listening. Um, I'm just reading through the 44 chats. <laughs> um, you want me to wait a second? Is nope, go said? ahead. Nope, go. Okay. Earlier you were talking about... Um, the whole messages thing and checking your messages all the freaking time. Cause yes, we all do it. And I wake up first thing in the morning and I might not answer them right away cause my head isn't straight, but I always check them right away. And I realize 15, 20 minutes later that I forget them anyway, because I just woke up. But another really important part, and I've noticed this, even though I'm a new coach, when you respond right away, you seem, um, you seem like you're like trying to pull them in, like you're desperate for them. Oh, you answered me. Okay, well, here, let me give you a bunch of information. When you take longer to respond, they're on the other side going, ah, did she get it? Does she want to respond? They're asking themselves those questions, and they become more eager to get that message. As opposed to us sitting over here and going, why aren't they answering me? Why don't they want this? So I think if you give them more time, you, you cause them to be the ones to want you as opposed to you being the one that wants them. And I've noticed that when I've waited longer, when I've waited six hours or 12 hours or until the next morning to answer somebody, I get more responses from them. That's a good, so yeah, thought, no, I completely agree with you. I thought that was a really good point. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Thank you for sharing that. And you know, it is easy. And as we're reading through the chats, a lot of us are prisoners to our phone. Erica, <laughs> she gets up at 2 a.m. Erica's my success partner. Say hi, everybody. She's on our team, but she's awesome. She lives in Rochester with me. Um, we are prisoners to our phone. We are, you know, it is just what we do, but we have to learn to say no. We have to learn to walk away. They're still going to be there. And if you're like me, I check messages and then I never reply. How many of you guys have messaged me and you're like, Ashley, you read my message and you never replied to me? That's because I shouldn't be checking my messages when I check my messages. If I go out to dinner, my phone should not be on me. I should be present with my husband. If I am out to lunch at a business meeting with Erica, her and I are both on our freaking phones. Like we're trapped to them. It's just kind of what we do, but you've got to get away from that because it is going to eat you alive. I promise. It's going to stress you. I can tell you times I'm like, nope, if you message me, I'm out. What was it? Like two weeks ago, I told the team, like, I'm out. You message me. I'm not going to answer you. And even Stephanie Parks called me. She's like, get off your phone. You said you were taking the weekend off. So yeah, it's something that we all do. It's hard, but you just got to set those boundaries. Um, does anybody else have any co thoughts, questions, concerns? I would love to hear from you guys. We almost have a full house tonight. Maybe not. Maybe I can't. I have a comment, even though I'm not on your team. <laughs> Go ahead, Erica. I mean, you talk about me enough. No, I just, I typed it in the little chat, but I loved what Ashley was talking about, about the positive actions. Um, I actually have my vision board sitting next to like my desk where I work. If you haven't created a vision board, no matter where you are, a new coach or, you know, a coach, to a veteran coach, um, have a vision board of whatever you want to accomplish for the year and have pictures of what you'll see yourself doing on like at that time at the end of the year and put that next to the place that you work. I know that when I sit down and I'm feeling a little bit frustrated and I'm doing like my power hour or something, I look to my right hand side and there's my vision board. Like it's, you can't, I can't hide it. Like there's no way to hide it. So it kind of gives me that push of like, it says pay $15,000 off in debt this year. I can't hide that from myself. And it, it encourages me to just keep inviting when really all I want to do is throw the towel in. So that was all I wanted to say. I loved your affirmation thing though. Thank you. And no, I completely agree um, with that, Erica. Mine is my desktop screen. So I see it. It's literally staring at me right now. Like it's just, it's there. 
But it's a good reminder because there are times where we want to throw in the towel. I told you guys, I've had that three times this month. Erica knows it. You know, we chat every day. Um, but that vision board reminds you of why you're a coach. And uh, Victoria, a success partner is just someone that you kind of check in with. I got really lucky because Erica and I met at a super Saturday in Rochester. Otherwise, I probably never would have found her. Um, Erica may have coaches on her team, actually, that are looking for success partners that are supposed to match up. But there is a great way to find success partners. We'll talk more about that, though, Victoria. I don't help with it. That's all you. It's like dating. You kind of have to date to find a success partner. It's weird, but you do. You have to date to see if they're like a good like match for you. Um, I have another question. Yeah, of course. How far like are you guys from Niagara Falls? Because when I was driving to Florida, I like saw signs for Rochester and I just wondered how far it was. We're like an hour. An, an hour. hour. An hour. Yeah. An hour. I, remember. I just thought maybe it would be cool one time to like meet anyone who was like close to Niagara would be cool to get together like one time in Niagara. Oh yeah, definitely. Let me know any, anytime, Victoria. I always like to, I'm up for a drive. I like to drive. Yeah. <laughs> it's like two and a half hours for me, but it's not that big of a deal. Where um, are you? I live like in Barrie, Ontario. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that, Katie, that's why I was going to ask you about Super Saturdays, if you had any in your area. Super Saturdays are a great way to meet success partners, too. Okay. FYI. Does anybody else have any questions or anything? Good night, Debbie. Thank you. Y'all are, like, pulling teeth. See? Erica, remember? I told you. I did a team call for Erica, and she's like, does anybody have any questions? Like, is there anything like my team? No, because my team doesn't talk. That's okay, though. <laughs> Ireland. I'm jealous, Danielle. Oh, yes, Emily. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, guys, real quick. Let's just chat about this unawful topic that everybody doesn't want to ignore. The lead program is changing. If you have not looked into your COO, shame on you because you should be looking into your COO every day. Coach Online Office, COO. The lead program is changing. So if you are an Emerald coach or you are striving to get Emerald, do not let this stop you. And I'm going to let Emily chime in and just, uh, Emily, did I say, I felt like I called her and said her name wrong. Cause she said something earlier that kind of like, I liked what she said, Emily, it's what you told me in Boxer. I'll let you chime in for a second. So starting April 1st to get success club leads, you have to be, hit success club 10 to get leads in general. You have to hit success club five. And I know some of you are like, why are they doing this? Like, why is Beachbody making it harder? Keep in mind, Beachbody doesn't have to give us customers. They do that to reward us. And they're doing it because there are coaches that literally just sit at Emerald or sit at Diamond who have been there for like three years and don't do anything with their business. And think about all those people that they're not helping. But being Emerald is not about the leads. And Emily, take it away from that moment, please, for a second. Um, yeah, so I don't know how many people were in a different group, but I was pissed when this came out. And so I figured out- was. I was really super, super mad because I've gotten, it's like awesome. I love getting the free customers and whatever. So what I was talking to Ashley about earlier is that we have to, why do we become Emerald? If you think about it, the bigger picture for Emerald is you're helping two people, you're starting to build a team, and then you're, the benefit is the cycle bonus. The leads are kind of secondary to that. So you have to stay focused and, and worry less about the leads and still maintain, you're going to get your cycle bonus. You're still going to be helping two people with Shakeology. You're going to be, you want to inspire these people to potentially, you know, work the business and maybe hopefully not just be discount coaches. The other thing I was going to say about this lead, which I kind of made a point of this. I don't know if it's true, but I'm going to be positive, right? Or positive affirmations in that if less people have success or hitting success club 10, that's the pool of dish, the distribution pool should be smaller. So there'll be hopefully the same number of customers given to a smaller number. And hopefully if you pit success of 10, you'll get a larger number of leads. I'm hoping, I don't know what the numbers look like, but mathematically speaking, I guess I am getting a PhD in science. <laughs> Math speaking, if the numbers stay the same, they should be giving those away. And that when you hit success club 10, you should be getting more than one or two a month, hypothetically speaking. I don't really know if that's true, but I'm just going to run with that and be positive and assume that's true. 
So no, and that makes sense. And you guys, I had some coaches that came to me and they're like, well, why should I bother being Emerald anymore? I'm not going to get leads. Like, what's the point? Being Emerald is about building your team and about changing your coaches lives and showing them that it's possible. So if you're in it just for the leads, let's chat because it's about so much more. You're still going to get that cycle bonus. You're still going to be helping people. You may have to push a little bit harder for success club. I'm not saying that none of you push hard. So please don't come badgering me after the company. Like you said, I don't work hard enough. Cause I never said that never, but it may just have to push you a little bit more and that is okay. So with that being said, that changes April 1st. FYI, if you want to read more about it, go to your coach online office and check out the breaking news. Um, Victoria, they might've put on hold. Um, you can go into your previous online office and it'll say yes or no next to HD for just send me a message after the call and I can help you. Does anybody else have any questions, comments, concerns? Katrina, you always have questions. You're being extra quiet tonight. Do we want to talk about doing a monthly challenge group? Thank you, Kelsey. See, this is why I need to write things down or I need an assistant. Okay. So Kelsey has developed a beach bikini boot camp, beach body. I don't know the freaking words. Bikini boot camp that we start on Monday. Katrina brought this to me on Monday. I feel like the national wake up call. I've yet to listen to it. I'm so sorry. If you've listened to the national wake up call, you know where I'm going with this. It's really I, good. You should listen to it. I will. When I drive back to Ohio in two weeks, I'm saving my national wake up calls for my eight hours. Um, I want to develop a challenge group for us every single month, a 30 day challenge group with the beach body on demand workouts. I think it's a great way, A, to constantly be helping people, B, to always have a challenge group going, and C, to be reaching out to new people. So, show of hands, will people be on board for this? Yeah? Okay. I will get together with um, some of the leaders on our team, and we will come up with different themes. So, we got the Bikini Boot Camp, so when this one ends, we will come up with theme. We'll kind of, how about we roll this one kind of until the end of April, and then we'll have a new one that starts in May. And then that way, every month, we have a new challenge group that you guys can plug away and invite people to by using the Beachbody On Demand. So you're constantly going to have new customers coming to you. Sound like a plan, Sam? Katrina, was that what you were looking for? Yeah. In addition to possibly a calendar on our team page of where everyone can plug in, like, okay, I'm doing three-day refresh. I'm doing a five-day clean eating group. I'm doing a 21-day fix group, like everyone's groups so that in case I only have like one customer, I can be like, oh great, I can maybe join this person. That's a great idea. Um, Katrina, would you like to be in charge of making a file for a calendar for the month of April? Sure, I can try that. Awesome. I'm trying to learn how to delegate things. It's my new thing I'm trying. I don't know how well I'm doing that. Uh, but yeah, if you want to do that and maybe mention the team page, like, look, every month we're going to have a file for the month of whatever it is. And if you're running whatever challenge group, we can post it on here. Yeah. Who is going through a wind tunnel right now? There's a motorcycle outside. Sorry. Oh, I was like, what the heck? But yeah, go ahead and let's do that, Katrina. And the other thing I'm going to develop with yeah. you for you guys is I'm going to develop a calendar that kind of tells you what you should post every day. Because I know some of us kind of struggle with posting, so I am in the midst of that. I have to do it. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's something that's really, really popular in the company that I work for. Uh, it's a Fortune 500 company. It's really, really large, but they do social media calendars. Yeah, I need to do that. I actually meant to partner up with Eric. It's really, really awesome. I love it. And this, this whole uh, um, doing the challenge groups together thing is helping me out so much because the first one that I tried to do, I got absolutely nobody to sign up for. It was just like I was doing it wrong or I wasn't motivated enough because I was doing it by myself. The second that I started doing the bikini boot camp, I got four people. So I'm super excited about that. Four people to me is huge. I don't know if to you guys that sounds like tiny. Oh no. It's freaking you, huge to me. I always say no matter how many people you have, be proud of it because that's one life that you're changing. So no matter. Mm -hmm. So no, I agree. I like the bigger challenge groups. We had a huge one in January and it went really well. So I think it's a good way to keep the people plugged in and constantly have them going and have new customers and whatnot, especially if we have the beach body on the main people, cause they may not want to follow P90X or insanity, whereas they can just kind of pick and choose. So I think it's a great idea. So we have the bikini boot camp. We'll come up with a theme for, I don't even know what month we're going, May, cause we'll have April. So we'll have a theme, we'll figure something out. So I'll 
kind of discuss it with the leaders on the team and get back to you guys. Katrina, don't ask me. Kelsey, can you message Katrina after the call to tell her how to get Tebow signed up for the club? I, 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 I don't even know. I don't even know. I'm still kind of having some issues, and it seems to be with my Canadian ladies, and I think it's because they're using their phone. Erica, have you signed up anybody for the free club trial? For the on-demand? Yeah. No. Well, like, I signed someone up for the challenge pack, but not the free... My lady couldn't figure it out, so she just paid for it. She's like, screw it, I'm just going to pay for it and signed up. I know, lucky me. But I don't know. I know the link has been down. I don't know. I, I've been Why did I not? I didn't even know you could do a free. You can just try it for free. Erica, have you been in the country in my office in the last couple of days? I have. I guess I just totally did not. <laughs> yes, it started Wait, today. You, you can do it for free. Yes, it started today that people can test it for free for 30 days. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't know if I like that because I feel like it devalues. Like, we have $1,500 worth of programs on there. I feel like you kind of devalue, devalue like, like, the worth of it. I think they're just doing it to see if people – that way people can test it to see if they want to keep doing it. Mm. I'm going to go okay. with it. I don't know. Who knows? We never know why Beachbody does what they do. <laughs> well, they obviously don't want a lot of people testing it if I didn't get, like, some big fancy, like, email about it. <laughs> no. I uh, – no. It's in the coach online office. So, good night, Caroline and Danielle. Um, so, yeah, Katrina, I don't know. That's really bad. Maybe Kelsey can help you out. I'm really sorry. Yeah, Katrina, I'll help you out after the call. Thanks, Kelsey. Okay. Appreciate it. Does anybody else have anything? Questions, comments, I had, I had one quick question. I don't know if it's off topic, but when you said that we're going to be doing the monthly challenge groups, will anybody in one of our current challenge groups be able to join another one, even if, like, if they pay? If they wind oh, up paying. Yeah, absolutely. Too. Yep. Okay. I always, I have challengers that have literally been in every challenge group since I started two years ago. Awesome. Because I don't want to be like, no, you can't come to this one. <laughs> oh, no, absolutely. I always say the more the merrier. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have anything else, guys? PowerPoint's going to be posted, right? I can never share a PowerPoint because I have a Mac computer unless somebody can teach me how to share a PowerPoint from Mac. But I will um, load the call. I, mean, I can do a photo album and put the, the slides in a photo album. I can do that. Do you have PowerPoint on your Mac? No. Okay, that's why. No. It, you got to get, get a PowerPoint to PDF converter. Yeah, I'm not paying for that. <laughs> well, you, there's a lot of free ones online. I'll have to look, but I'll post the slides in a picture album for you because I don't make them in a slideshow. I just do them and um, pick one, but I'll post That'll it. Be That'll be cool. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for coming. I really hope you guys, I was pumped for this call. I hope it helped you guys. I hope it's what you needed to hear. This has been a horrible month for us. Horrible, horrible, but it's not over. It's not over till it's over. Hi, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I hope it's what you guys need to hear. So encourage your coaches to listen to the recording if you think it's exactly what they need to hear. Erica, I'll send you the link if you think that your team needs to hear it. Um, just know that you guys can do this. I believe in every single one of you. I know you guys can do it. And you just need to believe in yourself. You're worth it. You can do it. And don't forget homework. I will post the link in the team page for your homework. So I will see you guys all next Thursday. I forgot who's hosting the call. Somebody is hosting the call. But I will see you guys next I will see you guys next Thursday. Bye, Bye. guys.